Mr. Pinkney. All right, everybody, Mrs. Angelo, Miss Miller, Mr. Hill's classes, welcome to our author, illustrator, and community member, Mr. Pinkney. All right, they're all yours. Okay, thank you. And um, good morning. Good morning. Um, by the way, I've been getting up a little earlier than usual on this. Uh, I forget how schools operate and um, uh, how early you guys get, um, get started. So I sort of appreciate that. Um, the slides on the screen in the very beginning is a, um, a collection of, of, um, of, of works that I've done over, over the years. And they really speak to the different subject matters that, um, that I tackle in my, um, in, my, in my art. So these drawings in the very beginning, um, the slides that are presented are watercolor on paper. And I'll take you through some the um, some steps of how I arrive at the uh, finished art, which you see uh, on the screen. So there's a mixture of, um, of folk tales. Uh, there's a legend of John Henry, and then an album cover that you see, and that's Mahler. And um, I he's he's a classical composer, and his music always has a sort of a um, um, uh, uh, nature plays a big role in his um, compositions and, and the way he thinks about music. Um, there are some playful things, and you'll see in my work that they um, some of the work will tend toward very uh, serious subject matter. Others will be a lot more playful. I love, if you can see up close, the giraffe, because the spots on the giraffe or books. <laughs> so um, speaking of books, what I thought I would do as well is some of the books that I share with you today and, and I've shared with the school uh, during the week, uh, I'll pull them together and I will stop by school. The school is open, correct? Right. So I'll stop by the school and have some signed copies for you guys that'll be in the library. I think that will be a nice connection. That's great. That, Thank you. No, you, you know, it's, it's, um, you, you're welcome for sure. And, and I'd love to do it. That's the beauty of all this. Um, I will see that that image on your right there is a, um, uh, that's a, that's a, um, a, a, a pheasant. And um, I have that pheasant in the studio. So maybe I'll get a chance to uh, point the camera there. Now, um, I start each uh, of my presentations with um, some <clears throat> takeaways that um, words that I want you to, or sentences that I want you to think of and, um, and, and, and actually call them up at different points of the presentation because they all, they speak to not only what I do uh, and what I wanna share with you, but I think um, some, some language to help you understand why I do what I do. So let's go. There's, there are four things, so it's not that challenging. Number one, okay. Uh, and I think you'll see this come through in my presentation, and that is that uh, I love what I do. And um, the fact is that I've been doing this for over six years. So for over 60 years, I've been sort of getting up in the morning, um, entering in my studio and sitting down with some sort of tools in my hands to make drawings or images. Um, so that's, that's the big part. And, and I want that, I want you to think about in reference to when I began to start making those decisions and putting those building blocks in place for me to become a professional artist. Okay, one again, because I, I, I keep going back to one because I, I just truly um, love what I what I do. And I'll, something else I, I was thinking about yesterday because after the presentation, I was back to my drawing board uh, or at this at yesterday, right after it was with my writing desk, and um, I was stuck. 
I was really stuck. I, I, for some reason or another, I was entering into a new chapter of this memoir that I'm writing and, um, and nothing was happening. Absolutely nothing was happening. And I got very frustrated. And then I realized that maybe just put it aside, do something else. And I did. And overnight this morning, I woke up and I had the answer. And it was always there. That's what it, that's, you know, it was there, but I couldn't find it yesterday. And that happens a lot when you're, especially when you're doing something, uh, when you're creating something or you're doing something new. The answers don't necessarily come right away. So you're young now, but and, I, and so, but you want to think about okay, if something, if I'm stuck, if you know, I'm searching for that idea that is not coming as fast as I'd like, maybe put it aside for a moment, you know, and maybe come back, and then when you come back to it, you'll come back to it maybe fresher. Or really, it's been germinating all the time, you know, just um, whirling around in your head, and it needs that kind of time. Okay. Ah, number two fits in, right? I work very, very hard. Um, and um, and by the way, if you love what you do, uh, it isn't. It it's it's more about the effort that you put into things, um, and also understanding what the goal might be. Um, the work can be rewarding, and um, and it truly is, and we'll get into that with other experiences that I've had. Places I've traveled because of my art, um, people I've met because of my art. So in that respect, um, that's very rewarding for me. And lastly, number four is something that my parents didn't understand, and they did uh, encouraged me. And I must admit, I had at one point, uh, teachers didn't quite understand that I could actually, that one could actually make a living doing art. And, um, and so that's, that's, that's key. Um, I, I think that, that a lot of people don't quite understand. They see it as something where you struggle um, at trying to make a living. That's not necessarily true. And um, so that's that's an important point. So I want to start a little bit with my um, my backstory or a little bit about my history. I grew up in uh, Philadelphia, um, section called Germantown, and um, Germantown was very historic. By the way, um, I, I've known this all along, but I really never thought about it. But um, where I grew up. This section of Germantown, which, as I said, was very historic. The first president, George Washington, right? This is really kind of cool. He, um, when he first became president, he had three residents in Philadelphia. One was in Germantown, three blocks from where I grew up. Is that powerful? Isn't that wonderful? Anyway, let's move on from there. So I grew up in um, uh, on a, 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 a small block. It was actually um, a street that was, had all um, uh, African Americans that had migrated from the South. So my world really was sort of centered there, uh, and um, and with them they brought um, sort of their uh, Southern heritage and culture with them. And one of the um, one of those things that they brought with them was really uh, storytelling. Um, my mother loved to read, and you'll see that that a lot of my books uh, are uh, uh, where I've adapted um, Hans Christian Andersen. My mother loved those stories and read those uh, to us as kids. But the the my 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 sense of when I heard first began to fall in love with stories was. Um, the fact that from the South, there was a, a tradition of telling stories. No one you know, um, would sit in front of you with a book, um, but they would actually tell the stories. And I love that because you know, each time a story was told, 
uh, it would be um, a different bent to it. They would emphasize certain things in one story, they would retell it and emphasize something else. So that was a rich, rich experience um, for me. And I often think that, um, that I would love my illustrations to have that same feel as someone in front of you actually telling a story. So, uh, because it's a, it's a, it was always told in such an animated way. Now, I, um, I loved drawing and I started to draw very early, um, perhaps, perhaps no earlier than you guys. Once mom or dad gives you something to mark with and then something to mark on, um, I started drawing and I loved it and um, and I continued to draw and um, and I think that was noticed and then supported by my father figuring out ways to get me um, something, uh, some tools to draw with and, and a pad to draw on. And I continued drawing and then um, as entered school, first grade, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade. Um, and as the grades, as I went up in grades, I discovered, um, or yes, I guess I discovered would be the, the word, um, that I was starting to trail behind my fellow students that um, I wasn't reading as well. I was struggling in, uh, in spelling and in composition and I didn't know what was wrong. And the teachers didn't know what was wrong. Um, and um, now as an adult, I discovered uh, that I'm dyslexic and that I have a learning disability or a, um, a, a learning difference. And um, and I worked very hard, and I didn't seem to be able to clear that hurdle for me. And um, of course, when I was in school, uh, you're going to love this. Um, so I was in school in 1940. I started in 1945. 1945. Um, so that was a long time ago. And at that point, they didn't understand. There was no word for um, diagnosis for dyslexia. So um, um, without the word uh, and, the, and a diagnose, there was no strategies for me. Um, the, uh, I would say the, the only strategy that sort of worked in a way was the fact that I was um, supported. I mean, it was, and there was an attempt with certain teachers to understand. And that was a kind of a beautiful thing because I needed that. Now, here's the role that drawing played. Um, that was something I could lean into. I mean, I could, um, uh, that was a way of bolstering my self-esteem that I could do something that the other students couldn't. So I sort of uh, used it as much as I, I, I could. And every um, assignment, I would figure out a way uh, to add a drawing or to make something. Uh, if there was a, some sort of report, the cover, uh, I would create a cover. So I made every effort I could uh, to find ways of um, uh, participating and joining into in, in, in the classroom and the class work. So, um, and by the way, I was never, during that time, and with all those struggles, I was never a poor student. I was a very good student. And I actually graduated uh, from elementary school with full honors. So, and that goes back to something I said earlier. I think it was number two. What's number two? I work very, very hard. Now, um, I met my first artist, unlike you guys, I was 13. And I had taken a job selling newspapers at a very busy intersection. And, um, and, and, and there, were, there was two avenues that, Germantown Avenue and Shelton Avenue that came together. And each corner had a newsstand. Uh, two were small and two were very large that sold magazines as, 
as well as newspapers and snacks. Uh, I, I worked at one of the smaller ones that only sold, only sold newspapers. And sometimes, you know, my corner was not as busy as the corners with the larger stands. I would take, remember I said I love to draw? I would take a pad and pencils to work with me. And um, when I wasn't trying to sell newspapers, meaning that there was no one, let's say, boarding a bus or, or leaving a, a trolley, um, um, I would have that sort of that time. So I would take out my drawing pad and I would draw what was ever what was ever in front of me, and um, you know they had there was a uh, department store rattles that were right across from my newsstand, and when they would change the window displays, I would do new drawings. It was constantly drawing, and at times I would draw people waiting for the bus or the trolley. As a matter of fact, I heard many many years later that there was something said that was uh, folks would say on a, on that in that area buy a paper from jerry you just may get a drawing so my first drawings that i i sold was i was 13 and i sold them for i sometimes a nickel or a dime <laughs> but anyway um i was already starting to do business then but anyway it turns out that one of my customers was john liney he was a cartoonist for comic strip called Little Henry. And um, he took note of me drawing one day, sketching, and he invited me up to his, he, at first he asked if I would share my drawings. And I did, of course. And um, and then he invited me up to his studio. He said, how would you like to come up to this, my studio? It's like a block up from, from the newsstand, right across from Germantown Avenue, come up early one day, and spend some time in my studio, which I did. Now, John Liney was the first professional artist I've I met. So you can imagine the sort of excitement of entering in his studio, and um, and um, he had projects um, tacked on the wall that uh, he was working on. Uh, he had. Um, a drawing board in the center of this space and next to the drawing board he had a um his tabaret now a tabaret is where an artist keeps his tools and his um uh, materials to work um that he works with and i'll share that with you as well so um so i remember that day clearly uh he talked to me about what he was doing um loosely critiqued what I was doing. And um, and then I left with, of course, a huge smile on my face. And and I now did I did I know then that I really wanted to become an artist, a professional artist? Did I understand what it would take to become a professional artist? I don't think so. I don't think it was that clear. However, what was very clear was the seed, that moment, that experience with John Liney, the seed of possibility was planted for me. That seed of possibility was planted for me. And I uh, followed, I followed that dream after that. So what I'm going to do this morning is, um, what um, I'm going to suggest that um, um, you visit me in my studio this morning. So the computer is in um, uh, on, on a music stand, and I'm going to uh, and I'm going to roll it around my studio, uh, stopping at times to talk about uh, different aspects of the way I work. And uh, Mr. Cohen, I tried this morning, I, I kind of figured out a little bit of something where I can sort of tilt the camera back and forth to give us a little bit more uh, variety and in, 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 uh, in a different kind of this perspective. So I'm gonna start here. Now, you're gonna hear me talk a lot about research. A reference is very, very important to my work. And um, not only um, um, in my work, but it, um, as reference, but also books as a as inspiration. So right behind me here, 
Um, I'm going to share. This is a, um, a, a library. This is these are um, volumes and catalogs from artists that I like and and, and respect, and um, that I'm inspired by. So, um, and I have over. Uh, my wife and I kind of argue about this. I think I have over three thousand books. Three thousand books are the reference books. Now you'll see on on the. Um, Hanging on the walls, these are works that I've done, uh, mainly what you call independent work. In other words, they're not uh, uh, projects where I'm working with a publisher, but these are works that I've done for myself. Interesting enough, these two portraits here, one is quite recent, and that's my great-granddaughter, Zion. And this is a model from and when I taught at the University of Delaware, uh, and um, I was doing some some drawings, and you notice that they're really very large in terms of actual size of, of, a, of, of, of a face. So I'm going to turn around because I want you to see. I want you to see my workspace. All right, uh, this is where I was sitting when I was um, uh, as I was talking to you, and um, I'm going to tilt this down and then back. Um, this is my tabaret. I talked to you uh, and spoke about uh, visiting John Liney in his studio and uh, his tabaret. My work is in watercolor. Uh, this is my palette. It's my palette, and it's kind of, I laid out, uh, and every artist might treat this differently. I laid mine out in sort of a kind of a rainbow from the yellows to reds, to oranges, to, to blues, and to greens. Um, this is a, a pen that I love working with. Um, it's a drawing pen. It's called Micron. I do a lot of my drawings there. And here is where I keep um, my brushes. And you'll see, um, you can see the sizes. I mean, look. The... And I use all of this, all these brushes. So important. So this drawing, this uh, drawing table is where I do my painting, watercolor, and then I have two desks, two working tables. And you'll also see uh, when we um, tour the studio, lots of plants. I love plants, um, uh, and um, I actually like the idea of taking care of plants. This is a, um, uh, a table, a drawing table, where I do my drawings, my working drawings. And by my, uh, when I mean say working drawing, um, I mean drawings that uh, are right before I do the finished art. And um, these drawings are usually done on vellum, which is a transparent, uh, paper, um, and um, um, this is a light box. So I transfer these drawings by putting the vellum drawings uh, on a light box. You can see through it. You can try this yourself. Take something, do a drawing on, on typewriter paper, and then put it up on the window, and then lay another sheet of paper over it and you'll find that you can see through it and i use these that that tracing as a guide that's as a guide um i have lots of friends in the studio and when i mean friends is my plants are my friends uh i collect things these are my friends and um music i talk a, you'll hear me talk often of inspiration uh, through artists that I admire uh, and look up to, and also inspiration in terms of what I take in when listening to music. All that's inspiring for me. Um, this um, image that you see on the easel here is a watercolor that it was a project that I was um, uh, commissioned to do, assigned to do by the U.S. Postal Service. And this image was to, um, to celebrate the Latin um, um, 
contributions to this country. So that was a um, it was a, a poster. Again, you'll see uh, around things on the, the wall uh, that um, not necessarily that I've done. There's an image from Eric Carl, um, a uh, print, and below it's a drawing that a friend of mine did. And then you'll see, and this is my writing table. I talked about writing um, each of my, uh, I would say, pieces to the work that I do in terms of art and writing um, has its own sort of station. And um, there's some pictures of my family and my, of course, my, my, my stationary bike. And beyond that is a, a library, um, a bookcase. And this is my nature library. So all of the books there you see in that bookcase, um, the, the core is nature. Um, so, and then that outer room, which eventually I'm gonna set up more as a technology room um, and maybe have somebody come in and, and, and assist me. On the back wall, you see more, more books. Uh, again, and I have a hallway that is also lined with books. Now, um, what is important to me, and it has been, and helping me, because um, is, is organization. So I'm going to stick my head in here and, and talk to you. Um, this is a another work table, and this is where I keep my reference. Um, so if I need a, a reference source, a book, uh, it doesn't go back on the shelf because I, I, you never know when you're going to need it. So it's here. Uh, and, and so this um, work table is separated into projects. So this is a project that I'm working on, um, which I'm writing and illustrating, and it's a uh, my memoir. So I'm going to talk about the ages um, uh, between 10 and 13, when I began to sort of um, uh, formulate in my head that maybe art was the way that um, I wanted to go. Maybe art would be my vocation. Uh, maybe art would be the way I would provide for my family. So this is a um, um, this is the research and writing um, for uh, my memoir. And these are some of the, I'll just show you one of the, the sketches. Uh, and I, I showed you that that uh, uh, pen and um, uh, the micron pen and those that's had it comes in different colors. I love the sepia color. So this is my memoir. Uh, that's one of the sketches. These are very early stages. I write everything in long hand. I write everything in long hand and then. I actually sit with my, right now, an assistant, and right now my assistant is my wife, the author, Gloria Jean, and she, uh, I dictate, and we go back and forth discussing whether the, 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 the language is right for that particular, what I'm trying to say in that experience, and um, here we're going to see, we see another project, and this is, um, it's kind of cool. Um, it's, and I'll share my sketchbook with you later. It's, um, uh, I'm working collaborating and collaborating means there's, um, there's an author and an illustrator. So my role is that of the illustrator in this case. And um, um, I'm working with the poet, Nikki Grimes. Uh, if you don't know her, you might wanna do some research on, on her work. Uh, she's an amazing, amazing poet. And she's um, actually, she, she and I are, are doing a book and it's called Walk in the Woods. And it's going to be um, sort of uh, inspired by stories, uh, my stories. So um, um, I'll stick my head in here. Okay, okay, good. Now, um, these are closets where I keep my artwork. And here, um, we've been talking about the work which I, Mostly, um, uh, I think we've been talking about books and book illustration. Uh, this is um, my own independent work or work that I do for myself. And, um, and these are, again, portraits. And um, part portraits, and these are done in pastel, which is a, um, 
uh, pastels are chalk. It's really just chalk. And um, so these are Pascal. This is my daughter, uh, Troy. I'm going to sit these here down low and I'll, maybe I'll tilt the camera down so that we can get see them. And that's my wife, Gloria Jean. And this is a self-portrait. Again, all done with chalk. Very different uh, uh, manner of working than if you're working in watercolor. So, um, it's another set of bookcases. This is, and it can be, I, I have still yet um, to unpack, but these are, are, are there's a reference uh, books. And um, let's see, I just pull one out. So I'm doing a period piece, right? Maybe 1800s or something like this. I pulled out a book on colonial antiques um, for chairs or whatever I need. So it's it's um, so whatever subject that I um, I'm pursuing, I have to find a way to research it. And um, okay, so we'll go back to my drawing board and. Um, I'm going to share with you. Uh, what's up next, uh, Mr. Cohen? Is it the, uh, what was my sketchbook? Right. Oh, gosh, you, the time is going by. <laughs> so I figure uh, if you want to show the sketchbook, we could show maybe a before and after your thumbnail and working, and then we could end with some Q&A. Okay, all right. Did I get carried away this morning? No, uh, this is, you did a different spin than the last presentation, so I think it's great. Okay. Keep, keep okay. going. So these are from my sketchbook. Ah. Uh, Words of wisdom, you love drawings, get yourself a sketchbook. This is mine. I have a ton of them up there. Um, and these are animals that I've experienced. Uh, it, you know, because this area has lots of green space. So, and I, I'm right smack in the middle of the McAndrews estate and, um, and Audubon. So lots of, lots of wildlife. And there's a red fox. And, and on the right, of course, <laughs> the raccoon, it's always raiding um, the garbage barrels. And there, uh, again, is a uh, tree frog. And on your right, um, a uh, white-tailed deer. And um, that's a hoot owl. Now, Mr. Cohen asked me, do you ever draw an owl, uh, a, not an owl, but a um, an eagle? And I said, eagle, yeah. There you go. That's my eagle. And it's quick story is that um, my wife and I were walking um, and um, we, there's trails around here and we spotted, the, and actually we didn't spot an eagle. We heard the eagle first. Uh, there's an explosion of energy and the eagle took off. And, um, and we looked closer as we walked closer to the spot and there, um, on some lower branches, was a tur two turkey vultures. And you know, they trail uh, eagles. And when an eagle has a kill, uh, they will actually come in and clean up what the eagle doesn't eat. So um, let's move on to some questions. Um, hey, no, one thing I wanted to say to you guys. Um, and that is the fact that it was rewarding. Give me just a, a second. I hadn't done this before, and it dawned on me last night. I didn't mention my books 
are published in 14 countries in 16 languages. So you can find my books all around the world. And I can't tell you how exciting it is to get a book and open it and it's in a different language. It's really a beautiful thing. Okay, first question. Oh, this is, okay, on your left is a, uh, you remember I talked about working drawings over in the, the other desk? Uh, the, the, you see on the left a working drawing, on the right you see the finished art or the final art, which is pencil and watercolor on paper. And these drawings are done with that pen, the micron pen that I shared with you. Okay, what's next? All right, so um, where do you get your books published is one question from Tyler. Well, I work right now with um, two publishers. Um, actually, it's, going, it's, it's actually three. Uh, three, Holiday House, uh, Dial, uh, Dial Books, and uh, Little Brown and, and Company. So, um, and, but I've worked really over the years because I've been doing this. My first book was 1964. I've worked with a lot of different publishers, um, but now I've sort of, those three are um, really um, the main publishers and I know everybody there and that's a good feeling. Okay, good. Uh, Mr. Hill asks, do you use certain media to convey different moods or different subject matter? Um, I, it's interesting. I, I, yes and no. And I, when I'm saying is that I, like the pastel gives me something. Uh, there's a spontaneity to it. So it's, it's, you, it's, it's more liberating. And I, I don't do sketches for those large portraits or any of the pastels. I just, uh, just go to work. Um, the watercolor, I know I've been doing it for a long time and I can set my mood by color. Um, I can, and, and what, what other thing that watercolor does, um, because I know it so well, it allows me to take on projects that are quite different uh, and new to me. In other words, I know what I'm doing so well, I can venture into subject that is new. Um, so yeah, so yes and no. Now, the other that also feeds into that question is that I don't know still yet, and this is intuitive, um, where uh, I'll be doing, like I say, a watercolor, and I'll say, oh, I think I can use some pastel. I think I could use some colored pencils, or maybe when I go over the pencil with um, with a marker, that's intuitive. I don't even know where that, that's the magic. I don't know where that comes from. So, um, um, but you that's why I keep all these materials around me, by the way. So, because you never know when it's, you're gonna get to that point where you'll say, won't me, let, let me explore what it, what, it, what it will look like if I do this. Yes, good. Uh, Mr. Cohen, you're on mute. All right, two questions from uh, Jonathan and Leticia. One is how many children you have. We know it's five from the getting to know you. And yeah. what do your children do? Okay, uh, four, four children. Did I put five? Four. Did I put five? Oh, four. I was right. Four sons, Troy, Brian, Scott, and Miles. Okay. Troy is, is, is my daughter. She's the oldest. She is a, um, the director of, um, of child life at Bank Street College, a graduate uh, school in, in New York City. She's also an incredible watercolorist and a weaver and a collagist, um, and, and she does that for herself. My son, Brian, you guys should know, uh, Brian Pinckney has illustrated and written over I don't know what the number is. I'm going to say 40 books by now. And he, uh, by the way, he's married to Andrea Davis Pinckney, who is an editor and writer as well. My middle son is Scott, and he's a creative director 
uh, in Toronto. He works at an advertising agency. And my son, Miles, the youngest, is a photographer. And he does books with his wife, Sandra. And just last year, my granddaughter, Charnel, had her first book published and is easily on her third book right at this very moment. So there's a bunch of us Pinkneys in the um, uh, in the publishing field. All right, that's great. Um, we have two that go back to your number two. Um, Justin was wondering how long it takes to make each painting. Um, and Henry, how hard do you work? How many hours a day slash week? Um, I, well, let's first say, the amount of time I spend on a an image depends on how complicated um, the image is. So there are you know certain illustrations that require one figure. There might be uh, another illustration that requires twenty five. So you can imagine that the more figures that you add, or the more elements or pieces you add to a piece of image, it takes longer. Now, usually, usually I'd never work on an image more than three days, three days, four days. And that's that's after the reference is done. And I should say after maybe um, uh, the preliminary work or the sketches and the thumbnails are done. But I work very now. Here's the point, though. And, and um, I work lots of uh, long hours and I tend to work about 10 hours a day. Uh, sometimes it will go over that. I always break for lunch and, and some exercising and all that. Uh, so I do pace myself. But I, I but I would go back to number one. I'd love what I do. And um and 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 I think as a result, uh, you don't see time, you know, tick, you don't see the clock ticking away. It's more about what do I want to achieve in a given day. Uh, aside from nature, where else do you draw your inspiration from? Um, I just love subject matter. I mean, you know, this is very interesting. I like something that is new to me. I always see my work not only as uh, an assignment and uh, something I'm commissioned to complete uh, that, you know, brings in income and all that, but I always always think of about is this something where I'm learning? Uh, that's always important that I'm always learning about. And so so I like the idea of being handed something that I've not done before or I have little knowledge about, because in order to 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 understand and to illustrate that subject, I have to know it. I have to learn about it. And um, that is you give you give me something that I, that I have to go to the library for. Uh, and I'm excited. That's the inspiration. What am I going to learn from this? What am I going to learn? Um, and so, yeah, so I draw my inspiration from a lot of different things, um, but mainly, certainly, it's the subject. Also, language. I love language. And I know, like, like, for instance, there are writers that I work with that I'm inspired by simply because I love how they knit words together. Um, what is your favorite? I know the other day you talked about John Henry. Yeah, John Henry is, um, there's no question. When I was a kid growing up, I, John Henry wasn't read to, to me. It was told. And, um, the other thing that was really powerful when I was a kid growing up, you guys had superheroes, right? You guys have superheroes? John Henry was my superhero. And when I was a kid growing up, there weren't many books where you saw people of color. So, and, and stories where you where the 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 um the main character was a person of color. So when I was a kid growing up, John Henry was my superhero. <laughs> He's my superhero. By the way, let's see what I, I do. My dedication, because every book is dedicated, right? It has a dedication. And um, and this book is de 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 um, dedicated to in memory of my father, James H. My John Henry. Yeah, my father was my one of one of my heroes. 
Mr. Yeah. Hill asked, um, is there a current author who you would like to provide illustrations for their work? Oh. Yeah, wow. Yes. Um, there was, there was, there's a poet, Mary Oliver, and um, she's just uh, an amazing poet. And, um, and I would love to illustrate her, what, some of her poems. That would be first on my list. There are probably others as well. Yeah. Now, I know Miss Miller's class was talking about loving the um, illustrations, and uh, I'm going to share with everybody. I know Mr. Hill, Mrs. Angelo, Miss Miller, they're going to do like little thank yous, and you can include pictures. Mr. Pinckney has told everybody he'd love to see it, whether you attach it in that or you take a picture and send it. Mr. Pinckney would love to see your own illustrations if you'd like to share them. Yeah, uh, I love that. Is there anything else you'd like to say to conclude, Mr. Pinckney? Um, I, I think perhaps the one thing I didn't talk about, and maybe I talked around, is this idea of, of being, and, and this is, is for me and for you guys, um, the role that curiosity might play in learning. And um, one of the things that I know about myself that I'm curious. We talked about um, authors or, or subject matter and what's inspiration. I'm always curious about new things because it's the new things that offer uh, inspiration. So keep yourself open and curious about things. Ask yourself, um, how many different ways can I see something? Or how many different ways can I um, uh, examine something, because I think that's part of, of what it's all about as well, is how many different ways I can spin something around. And that's, and that's, 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 that's opening up your mind. Keep your mind open and curious. And, and by the way, that's where the surprises come. Surprises come from, from, from those places that you don't, you don't expect. I loved how you said the other day, you know, when you draw a, a person, for instance, it could be from the left, from yeah. the right, from above, from below, you know, and all things you might not normally think of. And so and when I'm writing and I use a word, then what I'll do, and even if the word works, that's the, the word works, I, I will look up how many different words mean the same thing. And um, and um, and that's that's discovery, and that's what you want to be doing, no matter what you choose to do with your life. You're going to constantly be discovering something. Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much, um, Jerry. We've appreciated your time. Um, I know we we're going to do some second and three, second and third grade sessions, and then we're going to do a family night. So, you know, tell your families about this. I'll send the video later. You could watch with your families. And we look forward to continuing this relationship with you. So, everybody want to wave? <laughs> All right. Thanks again. Thanks. And we'll see you in a little bit with our fifth graders. All right. Very good. Take care. All right. Bye. Mm-hmm.